Okay, this is Buddy with Mary Lou Hulis, and we're going to actually be talking about the Twin Flame video. That's one that's going to be featured. Uh, as a matter of fact, right after we get through talking, the video starts. Um, I really personally myself enjoyed that video, and I know you will too. Well, you know, I think I've lived that video because Twin Flames, you know, the Bible says it's iron sharpening iron, so I feel like Twin Flames are what really spark us into really faster growth, and I've lived it, you know, so it's, we come here with soul contracts, you know, between lives, I believe we make soul contracts, so it really helps us understand the people in our lives, buddy, and, oh, yeah. and what they're here to really help us do, because we know every relationship is really an evolutionary um, push and impulse for us to grow, so I think they're going to enjoy that. What is a twin flame? Now, you know? stay tuned for deep insight into what twin flames really is. Thank you. Thank you very much. These things are film. This for you. Uh, is that spiritual? Not too bad. <laughs> anyway, are we ready? Yep. Okay. Well, like Nina said, you know what I do? I teach a lot of what I'm going through. So today I'm going to kind of take you with some of the things that I've been going through. You know, we are all divine lights of divinity, and we're here to experience every thought and every emotion. And really, that's what we're doing right now. How many of you are experiencing things in radical perceptions right now? I mean, we're really changing. And if we believe in synchronicity, everything in our life is happening. And it was worked out before we came here by a higher intelligence. And we've, uh, we've talked about this many times. You know, we think there is a coincidence. But the word coincidence means two lines coinciding perfectly. And when you really understand there is no coincidence in our life, everything is being worked out in synchronicity. And that means that everyone we meet, every circumstance in our life we encounter, never comes by chance. And many of us that are going through hard things right now, we'd like to think they come by chance, don't we? But really, they're here, and that's what I want to talk about today. They're here for our growth, <clears throat> because we've come here to explore the potential of an infinite universe through all the, through these relationships, through people that we encounter, through places, through things, and through all the situations in our life. So in reality, you are the light of divinity in form, every one of us. We've said in the Bible, it, calls, it says, God is light. So we're really photon energy, all of us. So we're the light of divinity in this form, in this realm of time and space, to have an opportunity to experience our infinite potential. Because all of us get, are really coming to know that we are divinity, and that we have limitless potential. So we're here to experience that, but what pushes us? You know, I've always said, Everybody wants change. How many want change? Everybody wants change, but we don't want anything different. And sometimes we have to be pushed into change. We just don't want that. So, so your infinite it, that exists in every parallel dimension. So it could be that everything that happens in your life, every interaction with a person that comes into your life is orchestrated by what we call a soul contract. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. How many of you have ever read about soul contracts? Well, you, I may be putting them in a different perspective today, but you just have to, I've been studying them, you just have to bear with me. So there's a book, and maybe some of you have read, it's called Journey of the Soul. How many people have read that in here, anybody? And what it, it's by this uh, Dr. Michael Newton, and he's a master hypnotist and a psychologist. And he did these past life regressions, and he began to take people into their super consciousness where they could go between lives and see how they planned their lives. And they all, I think he did like 29 people in the book, and how between lives, when they went in the spirit realm, they began to plan their lives. And also, as different people came into their lives, they would give each other a signal, and it would, be, it would be like this awakening to know that these people should be together. And I've told you before, Pam, I knew, what, 30 years ago, 20, 35 years ago, I, there was this quickening within me that I knew there was this draw to her. She didn't have it for me, so I had to pursue her. <laughs> but there was this job. And now we've been working together 25 years. We had a prison ministry. We've, we've done, we were on television for six years. We did this. We've worked together for 25 years. Also, Naina was another one. She was, had a little short shorts on, and she was in this at, at um, what, Philippine Park with a blue bowl on her head. 
And I knew that day, there was something in me. I said, you know what, I'm going to be friends with this girl. And I knew I didn't even have to go up and meet her that day or anything. And we have now been friends for so many years, done 16 years, done retreats together, been together. So there's this thing that we plan. And then there's that quick and many times that we begin to know that these people are not coming into our lives by chance. And many of you, how many of you have felt that with people? That you recognize them. It's like if there's this, this instant, you know, interaction and this instant relationship. And you don't meet anyone by chance, but according to a divine plan for your life. So our soul contracts means an interaction with someone. So it's really two aspects of divinity that are interacting with each other. So what I did, Pam brought a, a, an aspect of divinity in my life, and I brought one into hers, and so we've been interacting for 25 years. The same with Nana, but the same with all of you. You know, you're not in this room by coincidence. Every person that is in this room is really divinely orchestrated for us to learn something from. So many times this interaction is um, really stretching us, and I'm gonna talk about that. So we're passing each other, we're coming into each other, we're passing each other this energetic information that will help us along our journey, help us to really grow and, and accelerate and evolve in our journey as we bring these people into our, our life. And it's going to help us bring about our highest potential. And that's really what every interaction is about. Every interaction in your life is really about bringing your highest potential in. Now think right now. You have some people in your life probably that aren't so you wouldn't think that they are bringing your highest potential in. And that's what I'm going to talk about. Would you think that? Some people that really trigger you. You know, how many of us are so spiritual? We, we're just so spiritual to that certain person comes in our life, and we erupt, and we say, why am I? You know, I'm so enlightened, so spiritual. Why does that happen? Because that's their job. That's their job to really bring us to that point, which I'm really getting ahead of myself. So every, act, it, every interaction is really about a relationship. And so we begin to look at every interaction. We're dissolving and fulfilling soul contracts. I had a soul contract with Pam and Mark before we even came here. I mean, we worked together for 25 years. We definitely, she said when she came to Florida, they were traveling musicians. And they traveled for many years. And <clears throat> they came to Florida and Pam said, I don't know why. I said, I don't, I don't want to travel anymore. I, I just want to stay here in Newport Ritchie. Because there was a plan. And she didn't know it, but our, our unconscious knows that we had this soul contract that we set up to meet each other, to start this journey together, and to bring these two pieces of divinity together to have this interaction. So if we can see that every interaction is dissolving and fulfilling some kind of soul contract, we would look at each relationship as really an important part of our growth, even those ones that are the hardest relationships. And we understand if we don't learn the lesson or observe, uh, absorb the lesson, it's going to keep repeating and repeating. How many of us have had a certain type of person in our lives, and we don't learn the lesson, and we bring the same person back into our lives again? You know, and until we get that lesson or observe, uh, absorb what we're supposed to learn from that, we keep repeating it. And that's what, so what is a soul contract? Now this is, you know, Nana might say it a little differently, people might say it. This is my take on it. A soul contract is either motivating you into taking an action step that will enable you to embody higher wisdom so it can resolve the circumstances you're going through, or a soul contract is motivating you to make choices that you've never made in the past. It's pressing you in some way. It's doing something to really help you take an action step to begin growth, to evolve, so you can raise your vibration and bring forth a, a fuller potential in this lifetime. And that's what every interaction is about. What if we looked at people like that? You know, if, when pe somebody new came into our life and we started looking for that, looking for what that interaction is bringing and know that they have a gift for us, it would change everything. Or, now this is another thing I think is soul contract in, and this is maybe happening in your life right now, or it can put you in a situation that may seem unjust and unfair. So you can become aware of judgment. You know, the Bible has a statement, and it says this. It, it has a principle. It says, judge not that you be judged. And what it means is if you begin to judge others, you're really judging yourself. And what happens when we judge ourselves is we really, or judge someone else, we withhold love from ourselves. When we're in a judgment mode, you cannot judge and love yourself at the same time. 
You can't be judging someone because really you're judging yourself. You know, that other person that looks like the other person is really you. And that's what I'm learning right now, through difficult circumstances. You know, we get into this judgment mode, that's when fear and all of the other emotions come in because we can't love ourselves. So you can't judge another person and love yourself at the same time. It's impossible to do. So as we realize we're judging, if we can just step back a moment and meet ourselves with love and begin to release that judgment, knowing that judgment is just calling us for more self-love. When we're judging someone else, the reality is it's really calling for us to love ourselves more. Because when we don't love ourselves, we're always in that judgment mode. Judge not that you be judged. <clears throat> because you can't judge and love yourself at the same time. So as we begin to resolve judgment, we're here to transform judgment into love. And I think that's what people in this place do so well. And I'm going to, get, I'm going to talk about how when we really resolve that, how we begin to have this energetic match that we bring people into our lives, a community into our lives, and people into our lives that really resonate with where we are. <clears throat> so by learning to embrace and love the one who judges me when I'm judging something, Instead of reprimanding myself, <clears throat> to begin to know that I'm really calling for more love for myself, it begins to embrace myself. It begins to unravel in that moment, and I begin to evolve because I come out of judgment. I remember Reba. How many of you were here when Reba talked about she was doing this whole plan about non-judgment? Remember, Kim? I mean, she had all of these steps that she was doing to stop judgment. She said, it's amazing how we judge. And judgment is really the thing that holds us back. So when, when a soul contract, we are either motivated to act in higher consciousness, knowing the solution to the situation, or we're put in different situations so we can become aware and come into harmony with the circumstances and feelings that we keep judging. Because what happens, those people come into our lives to show us what we're judging all the time. So that's what a soul contract is. That person is in our life to bring those things up in us to, to resolve and heal within ourselves. And I'm going to go into that, go into the two things. I'm going to talk about twin flames and um, soulmates. <clears throat> and I don't know about you, Roger, but every time I do a reading, what does everybody want? Their soulmate. So, but they, if they really know what a twin flame is, and I, I had a girl recently that was asking about a twin flame. A twin flame is something totally different than a soulmate. And that's what I'm going to go into. So we're here to, to really become aware of that and to realize that everything in our life, Everything in our lives is divinely orchestrated. A judgment is a belief or insistence that something's out of balance in your life, and it's not right what's going on. That's really what a judgment is. If I say the circumstances that I are, I'm in right now are out of balance and they're not right in my life, I've made a judgment. And that's really what we're saying instead of being divinely orchestrated. What if we look at those hard things and we say, really? They were divinely orchestrated for our growth to really push us into some kind of action many times. So judgment is not bad, but judgment is about how it motivates us to act and how it strips us of a behavior. Because when you no longer have a judgment against a behavior as good versus bad, how many of us know there is not good and bad? You know, everything is a degree. I mean, there's really not even hot and cold, is there? Everything is just degree. When does hot go from hot to cold? You know, it just starts to move. There really isn't this degree. So when we stop judging between good versus bad, the behavior doesn't arise anymore. But what we think, if we don't judge it, we're going to keep acting and manifesting it. When the reality is, when we stop judging it, we stop, uh, we stop manifesting it because we're not giving it the energy. We know the principle, don't we? What we put our attention on, what? It grows. So when we quit judging ourselves, it, we quit bringing those behaviors to the surface. So there's so much to this. So a soul contract are negotiated and worked out with two or more aspects of divinity interacting or colliding. Now we need to have a relationship right now where two aspects of divinity are colliding instead of really interacting. But I'm going to show you sometimes those are the most powerful relationships in your life. So sometimes we collide. In, in something we call a relationship. And all our soul contracts are worked out through what we call relationships. You know, everything in life is worked out through a relationship. Think about that. What's the most important thing that's happening in your life? At this moment and forever, from the time you draw breath, 
It's your relationship, relationship with your parents, relationship with your siblings. And when we know everyone has been divinely orchestrated in our lives, then we'll ask the question, what am I here to learn from this relationship? What is it here to teach me? Or learn to know what is these patterns that keep repeating in my life trying to show me? Help me, that are here to really help me evolve my consciousness because if everything is divinely orchestrated, then everything in your life is here to evolve your consciousness. That's why you're on the planet. That's why we all draw breath. You know, we have pleasure. We have all of these things that we do. But the, the truth is, the bottom line is, everything here is trying to make us evolve our consciousness. And can I honor the relationship, no matter how it is, as a divine orchestration? And that it doesn't mean that the person who is interacting with you understands that it's a divine orchestration. How many times does somebody really, that you're colliding in a relationship with, you may understand it's a divine orchestration, but they may not see it at all, but they're playing a role. The universe has got them playing a role for you so that you can look at it that way. But they may not know it at all. They may not know that it's, but it's to help you to grow in the fastest way. Because what we say, like I said earlier, we all say we want to change, but we don't want anything different. So when these relationships come in that are really igniting us, they press us into moving. They, they make us so uncomfortable sometimes that we have to move. So those are ones that really put us on the fast track to growth. And many times, they're the ones that cause the most chaos in our lives. And our, they're just there to pre play that role to, so that you can evolve into your greatest potential. And there are two kinds of soul co uh, contracts that help us evolve. One is a twin flame. These are the two I'm going to talk about. And the other is a soulmate. So what I want to talk about first is a twin flame. Sounds so beautiful, doesn't it? A twin flame. You know, the flame comes together and it's just love and all of that. Well, wrong. That's wrong. not what it is at all. <laughs> <laughs> so one is a twin flame, the other is a soulmate. And, and there may be a, a difference but, that you've heard, but I'm going to maybe go to a different way because I've been studying and looking it up, and this is what really kind of resonates with me. Both of these soul contracts are here to help us resolve what's needed to resolve in our lifetime. Both of them, a soulmate and a uh, twin flame. And they also help us evolve. And when we know and become aware that every moment of our life is divinely orchestrated and are here to purposely fulfill this soul contract, then our will becomes one with divine will. And we begin to see that life is orchestrated. And we don't fight against these things as much as we have in the past. So life is all about soul contracts. You're here, and you've got soul contracts. Every person that's been in your life, your children, your parents, your siblings, your friends, every person has come in as a soul contract to you. And so there's these different kinds of relationships. And life is about fulfilling these consciously. See, people are fulfilling them, but they're fulfilling them unconsciously. They're not learning. They're not absorbing the lessons. So twin flames, now listen to this. Twin flames are tumultuous relationships. They're not the relationships that flow and everything's beautiful. And you know what it says? It says in the Bible, God is a consuming fire. So a flame is something that's burning something away from you. Something that's really making you take a look at yourself. So a twin flame is a tumultuous relationship. And they can be, it can be romantic, but it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. It can be your parent. I know people that have problems with their mothers. It can be a sibling. It can be one of your children. It can be a romantic relationship. It can be just somebody in your life that causes chaos to erupt and really makes you uh, uncomfortable so that you really begin to take a look at yourself. So it can be a, a co-worker. How many of us have had co-workers that have made us miserable? You know, it can be anybody in your life, but that's really a twin thing. And they have come to fast track you into a higher level of consciousness and work out the stuff, in your stuff in a shorter period of time. Twin flames are usually intense relationships. You know, there are people that come in and really rub you. You know, I used to love it and said, you know, in the Bible it says, you know, we come as an iron sharpening iron. That sounds so beautiful, doesn't it? You know, we're sharpening each other. But you know, when iron goes like this, there's flickers that come out. Well, that's your twin flame. That's what happens that your twin flame comes to do to you. Comes to rub you so that you know that there's something you need to really resolve in your life. Twin flames are usually intense relationships. 
And I said, have you ever seen, you know, you feel so enlightened, and I can come in here and love all of you. You know, everybody's so loving, but then I can go to where maybe my twin flame is, and it's like all of a sudden you get a, your stomach's like this, and you want to pop them. You know, they just, they just flick your back. You know, they just make, and I say, I'm so enlightened over this sinner. I'm so enlightened when I'm reading in the morning. But then you get with your twin flame, and you erupt, and you just feel all this tense, and you start, what? Judging yourself then, don't you? We start judging ourselves, and that when we really need more love. But that's their job. That's their sole contract with you. It brings up in you what we need to evolve, resolve. And one judgment is, I shouldn't like what, how I'm acting right now. And I know I feel that way. Because when you're enlightened, aren't you supposed to be sweet all the time? And say all spiritual words all the time? And just accept everybody all the time? How many of us are like that? Oh, oh, Pam, I know you too well. No. no, Pam, I tell you, Pam, no, that's not Pam. <laughs> anyway, that's because most twin flame contracts are here to resolve judgment. So when you erupt within yourself, it's then you need to honor yourself and love yourself more. And when we feel, sometimes we feel it's, it's not okay to manifest like this. But once we begin to not judge ourselves and love ourselves and know that that's exactly what the twin flame's there to do. Bring that stuff up in you that you can't see. That stuff in you that needs to be resolved. That, those patterns that need to be changed so that you can evolve. And really, I know I have a couple of twin flames that do a great job in my life. I mean, a perfect job in my life of doing all those things. So it said that we're here to clear judgment of ourselves because we can't love ourselves while we're judging. Whether we're judging ourselves or somebody else, you cannot be in judgment and loving yourself at the same time. So we're here to transform judgment into love. And I, I loved it. I, I wish I could remember some of the points that Reba was talking about because she went through how every day she was doing all these you remember, Diane, were you here when she talked about that? She's talking about all of these things that she did to resolve judgment and how it keeps coming up and coming up. And that's really what we're trying to resolve in our lives. And become aware it's just a call for us to love ourselves more. So the intense nature of that twin flame relationship can be resolved. And a soulmate is you becoming the embodiment of your highest potential. And when you become the embodiment of your highest potential, you can manifest a, counter a counterpart who can offer you the qualities that create a particular balance in your life. That's a soulmate relationship. Somebody that comes in to kind of balance you out. Instead of, you know, help you erupt all these things, it comes in to kind of balance you out and bring harmony into your life. And a twin flame is a fast-burning relationship, burning, burning fast and tense to press you in to the next stage of your evolution, to help you get rid of old paradigms. Because what, they start to burn up those old paradigms. And they help us, really press us into taking an action step so many times. And a soulmate relationship is more relaxed and balanced and flows. It doesn't mean you, have, you don't have disagreement. But there's a difference. A twin flame are two beings that come together to really push one another into a quick growth. A soulmate are two beings that are growing but are not, are more balanced for one another. And a sign it's a twin flame is you feel unbalanced, you feel depressed, you feel intense, you feel volatile. How many of you right now think, close your eyes just a minute and think, is there a twin flame in your life? Somebody in your life that's really pushing you right now? Making you feel volatile? And a soulmate, you can open your eyes, and a soulmate is like your energetic counterpart, mentally, emotionally, romantically, physically. It's like there's this balance between you that comes in. And it's that one that seems reflection to you the balance of harmony you've created in your, your journey, your spiritual journey, or maybe in a different lifetime. And they've come in to balance you out. And it's not this flicker. So many can have differences. But it's like they resolve them. They can resolve them, and they can listen to one another. I know with a twin flame, they don't listen. <laughs> uh -uh. They, they're, always, they're always accusatory, and they don't listen. Twin flames don't listen, but the soulmate listens. And they, they hear each other. And then they get more heart-centered. Twin flames don't come from the heart many times. But they're helping you. That's what I want. They're helping you. So they, so soulmate is somebody that brings balance into the relationship. And it can be romantic, but it doesn't have to be romantic. And they can, a soulmate can come at different levels of your life. And I know people, I feel like both Nana and Pam are soulmate to me. So it doesn't have to be a, you know, a, a um, 
romantic relationship, but we balance each other out in different aspects of our divinity. I mean, Pam, <laughs> I don't tell you what Pam does for me. <laughs> she takes me, woo, I have to go. I have to hold her down sometimes because she's winding up my bed in a spiral. Anyway, she. <laughs> Well, both of them. Both of them. <laughs> Let's see, where am I here? So you're trying to tell us you're the stable one? <laughs> In both these relationships, I happen to be the stable one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I'm the speaking now. I have the stage. <laughs> I get it next. <laughs> so a twin flame relationship will bring you into healing stages because what they do for you is bring your stuff up. You know, I've always said, if hell's not in you, hell ain't going to evolve, you know, or break out when you come into conflict with something. But as they bring that hell up in you. And to put it in a position that you will start learning more about yourself and really start evolving and resolving some of the issues in your life. You know, we love it when everything is just peaceful, don't we? God, it's so nice when everything is just peaceful and we're just floating along. But we're not changing. We're not growing. You know, it's these other, these things that come into our life that really push us to evolve. And a soulmate is someone you meet when you reach a certain point of complete and wholeness on your journey. And it's then you start to attract more soulmate energy. And I feel like I've attracted soulmate energy in here. I know Nathan comes <coughs> every week two days a week, and Kathleen, and Taylor, and, so many, and Larry, and people that come in here, you can just feel that there's a, there's a soulmate energy that you begin attracting these people that you really resonate with, and it's so beautiful. And, you, and then you start attracting um, uh, relationships, but a soulmate also can be a soul family that you attract, or neighbors, a community, when you've gotten through the stages when you're awakening, and you're resolving the soul contracts of old paradigms and friends. How many of you, when you started to evolve, it's like your friends disappeared? That's what happened to me years ago. It's like I started awaken and I said, where's all my friends? You know, I had friends for 20 years and they just drifted out of your life because your energy changes. And then you begin to bring in those people that resonate with you. And as you really begin to deal with your issues, you bring in that soul family. You begin to create that community that resonates with you, that you can really interact with. It's so beautiful. And as your vibration begins to rise, you know, you bring in those people that resonate with you. Soulmate energy is also when you can manifest the community that meets you at a similar vibration. Now, I think right now, we've manifested this. Because all of us are at a very similar vibration. We're hearing what's going on. We want to evolve. We know that we're in this game called life down here, too. And we're learning and, and bringing these relationships in to really transform our lives. So we're really on the same vibration. I couldn't be speaking this someplace else. They wouldn't get it at all. But here, we're all in the same vibration. So in soulmate energy, when you can manifest that community, twin flames are <coughs> who press you so that the best is brought out of you no matter how despicable the universe has them played a part for you. No matter how hard they are on you, no matter how much they turn your life upside down, they're really there to play that part for you, to put you on the fast track, to bring that stuff to the surface so you can really begin resolving it. And they're there to play that part. And you, as you give away your power until you make the decision to trust the universe as your guide. And we're all learning that. I don't know about you, but I know that all of us are being pressed in that way. And you want to be away from that place of receiving abuse and being disrespected physically and mentally. And you get out of the situation, and then the contract is resolved. And how many of us have had those kind of contracts in our lives? With a sibling, or a romantic, or whatever. And we take it and take it until that abuse really comes. And then we can step out of that and really resolve that contract. And that's where many of us are right now. And you get out of a situation and you make a spiritual, or you can go back and be spiritually codependent. And <clears throat> you go back into the closet and just put up with it. And we all make those decisions. When a twin flame relation turns up the heat, that's when life is trying to evict you. It's trying to change you from your old paradigms and trying to push you out. And it's not comfortable. It isn't comfortable. And when we've really learned our lessons and when we're really ready, that's you know, when we can do that. And the key is there's no such thing as working out a soul contract with any form of abuse. 
And that's the thing we're all learning too. You know, <clears throat> I remember when we were all in the church, and no matter how people treated you, you just felt like you had to, you know, just keep loving them. But I found we're all like parts of the puzzle. And just some of us fit together. And everybody's in the puzzle. But they don't have to be, sometimes they don't fit where your puzzle piece is. And you can push that relationship away. Because when abuse has, starts happening, that soul contract is over. And you can cut that relationship. And really, you know, not feel guilty about it. Not judge yourself about it. And that's what we're learning too. Because every piece, I always look at life like that puzzle. Every piece of the puzzle does not fit together. And so there's no such thing as working out a contract where abuse is. And it's challenging you to shake things up. Take the snow globe of your life and begin to shake it up and change things. And like I said, we say we want change. I, I, I've been preaching change for years. Now, when, when change comes to me, I go, this is really difficult. It's so much more <clears throat> difficult than we imagine it is. Because really, what somebody said to me one time is, really, we go through a death. It's like a death of an old paradigm, a death of an old world that we had all these belief systems that this is the way things should be. And it's like you're dying to those things. And a death is not easy. But what death brings is a rebirth. And it brings us into a higher evolution. And it helps us really to, to evolve. So <clears throat> not accepting what is if we're in toxicity. And here's when you know a twin flame relationship is over. If you, within yourself, don't want to be with that person anymore, but you're scared to say it, the contract is over. When you don't enjoy being with somebody, you know, I, I know it could be a relative in your family, and sometimes we have to cut those relationships, you know, because they're so toxic. When you feel that you don't want to be with that person, that's when you can really cut that contract. But a soulmate may have friction, but it works out easily because it's a balanced, more balanced relationship. And both are willing, like I said, to, to listen, to apologize. And everything naturally works out because then you become more heart-centered. So that's when you know that that relationship is really not that twin flame, but it's really that soulmate because you, it begins to flow and you work things out and you know that that person listens and that you can really resolve those things between you. Whereas in a twin flame, they remember everything you've done wrong. Everything. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a PowerPoint presentation of your life. And they tell you everything. And they accuse you of everything. They've got it all down pat. They're going to tell you everything you've done wrong. And they build a case. And they got the evidence against you. <clears throat> and everything is accusatory. And, and then when you want to ask them any questions, they're, they're still accusing. They're not listening. It's not heart-centered. You know, it's not something that you can really resolve. So these are the ways we know really how the relationship is. And li life is always trying to bring up all of us to, higher, to our highest potential. Everything in your life is working for that, to press you into your highest potential. But in a soulmate relationship, the other person reflects back to you. That soulmate works things through and works things out together. And it's so much more balanced and more flowy. So a twin flame energy is not about working things out with another person. It's what they can help you work out within yourself. And the question is, can we see that gift? Can we see that gift? Because sometimes we feel alone, don't we? We feel alone when we have that twin flame and, you know, everything is pushing us. But what it's really pushing us is to go within ourselves and to begin resolving those things within ourselves. You know, instead of looking for somebody outside of ourselves to, re to resolve it. It's all about what they help you to work out within yourself. A twin flame is like, here's the stuff you haven't worked out, and here's the challenge. <clears throat> you can clear the contract until abuse shows up. Then you have to resolve the contract. Because none of us, we used to think that, didn't we? I know when I, when I was in church, you know, no matter how people treated you, I used to always say, I remember this girl, she prayed so beautiful. God, she just took you away when she prayed. And then she was mean as a snake. As soon as she opened her eyes, she was so mean as a snake. You know? I, but I kept trying to be friends with her. Because, you know, you, I would hear how beautiful she prayed and everything. But then I finally said, you know, I think this relationship ain't going to work. So anyway, we're learning. <clears throat> and the twin flame brings up in us betrayal, disillusionment, heartbreak, confusion, all of these things begin to erupt within us and we begin to have our stuff come up to the surface. But what happens when we bring our stuff to the light, they're really giving us a gift 
because we're beginning to see it, and then we can begin to resolve it. So if we can look at that twin flame and know that everything is divinely orchestrated, and they're really there playing a part for us that the universe gave them, even if they don't know it, it helps us to get through these situations that are really difficult. And a spiritual gift trying to initiate us into a higher consciousness by breaking you completely open, if you allow it. And I, I tell you, I know that that's true. Because every fear, every piece of guilt, they can bring all that stuff up in you. And if you allow it to just totally break you open, you get to the point where you don't put the pieces of your heart back together again. And you're open to love in a more intimate, a more passionate, the people around you in a, in a better way. And you transcend the cycle, which means you become free to love more deeply, more intimately in every moment. And when that love leads others in a moment of engagement, for just a second or maybe a lifetime, it allows you to love in every moment, engage in love, affair with every soul that comes into your life. So what a really a twin flame is really doing for you, it's breaking open your heart that you can love more completely and more unconditionally, not just to romantic, but to every person that comes into your life. You, if your heart is open, you begin to feel this love in a powerful way. You connect with people in a more intimate way. How many of you are experiencing that right now? You're connecting people to people in a more intimate way. It's like you have this overflowing love for them. I mean, people that come into the center, I feel that so many times. And maybe it is because of a twin flame that has broken my heart open, that I can really uh, allow myself to love in a deeper way. You see, these twin flames, we look at them as the enemy so many times. And in reality, they're bringing a gift to us. Doesn't feel good. Doesn't feel comfortable. And they, you feel like you're in the fire. They really put you in the fire. But if you can keep focusing that they are really doing something to open your heart, it changes everything. And when you love meets moments of engagement, you love friends and family in such a different way. And whether anyone loves you back or not, you're fulfilled just by the loving. Just by giving that love away, it fills you up. And you just feel so full because your heart has been broken open and you're allowing yourself to love in that deeper, more intimate way as people come in. And it doesn't matter if they love you back or not. Because you've evolved. And you know. And this is what those twin flames bring for you. And that's the transformation that twin flames bring. When they broke, break your heart open to a new reality. And what we're all here to do is to really learn to love unconditionally. It's all about love. And that's what I love about all the really powerful spiritual teachers, they'll talk about all this stuff. But the bottom line is, there's only one reality. And that reality is love. And it's to love unconditionally. To love intimately. To see past the boundaries of each other. To see past the walls that we put up. And to know that we're really loving another, we're loving ourselves. And when we're in judgment, well, what we really need is to love ourselves more deeply. And to know that it's a cry for love. So these relationships, what we call relationships, is what your life is really all about. And it's really all about helping us to evolve into love. And so it is. So it is.